thought I'd sit down and film a spring inspired makeup tutorial for you today and I was really inspired by the Morphe 35U palette. It is a very very good palette. I love it a lot and I had fun playing with it today and I wanted to do a spring look for you so I used that palette and I created this look right here. It's just really colorful and springy and when I think of spring I think of really luminous skin so I tried to make my skin look really dewy and just fresh and then I also think of pops of color for spring so I incorporated that as well. If you do like this then just keep on watching and we can get right into the tutorial. So I'm starting this makeup look with a fresh clean face and I'm using this Wet n Wild Coverall Primer all over my skin first just to help prime for foundation. This is very moisturizing and it helps prolong my foundation so I do actually really like this product. And then I'm going in with this Rimmel Good to Glow Highlighter and Notting Hill Glow. And I'm going to mix this in with my Studio Sculpt NC15 foundation from MAC. And I'm just making a little cocktail because I want to have really luminous skin so mixing this highlighter with this foundation that's already dewy is going to give me a really luminous effect. And I'm just placing that all over my skin. And then I'm going in with this e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush and I'm going to just buff that into my skin. And I noticed recently that these newer e.l.f. brushes don't have the names on them. I don't know if you could tell, but it was kind of annoying when I realized that. So I hope they continue putting the names on them. I got this one and the Blending Eye Brush and neither one of them had the names on them. So. That was a little bit worrisome. And then I'm going in with this Revlon Color Stay Concealer in Fair. This is a medium coverage concealer and it works pretty well. I'm just going in a triangular shape under my eyes to conceal dark circles and to highlight. And I'm also putting it on my eyelids to prime for eyeshadow and I'm using it to cover up any redness on my nose. And I'm using that same brush just to buff in that concealer. This concealer is a pretty good one from the drugstore. It doesn't crease on me, especially if I set it, so I would recommend setting any concealer, but it doesn't crease on me. And it's pretty medium coverage and it lasts all day. And then I'm going in with this Wet n Wild Illuminati Highlighting and Concealing Pen, I think it's called, and mine's in the shade Ivory Into You, and I'm using this concealer more so to highlight, so I'm using it under my eyes, down the bridge of my nose, my forehead, and then above my cupid's bow and on my chin, and I'm also buffing that in with that same Ultimate Blending Brush from e.l.f. I really, really like this brush. This was my first time using it, and it's really multi-purpose. And then I'm taking that Wet n Wild Contour Brush and the Lorac Pro Contour Kit, and I'm taking that yellow highlight and the beige highlight and mixing those two shades together and just setting all of the places where I put concealer. And now I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. I'm using the MAC Velux Brow Pencil and Fling and just filling in my eyebrows. I'm following the natural shape of them. I don't do anything too crazy. I don't do any carving or anything. I just follow the natural shape of my eyebrows. And then I go a little bit lighter on the inner corner. And I found that using my finger to just kind of buff it in helps it look more blended and less harsh. The spoolie on the end of the Velux brow pencil also works really well but I like using my finger just a little bit better. And then I'm using this Great Lash Mascara and Clear from Maybelline just to set my brow hairs in place and keep them there all day. Now I'm going in with my Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette and I'm taking this peanut butter color and I'm taking the Wet n Wild Crease Brush and just using this as a transition for my makeup look. You don't have to be too precise with this, this is purely for a transition color. And this one's pretty close to my skin tone and it also has 
orangey undertone so it looks good with this makeup look. So I'm just blending that in using windshield wiper motions. I do like this brush. It's comparable to the Morphe MB23. It's nice and thick like that one. It's a thicker blending brush so it really diffuses the eye makeup. And then I'm going in with this Morphe Brushes palette in 35U. And I'm taking the orange shade I'm pointing to right there. And this is a glittery shade, but I'm using it a really light wash of it in the crease with that same brush. I just want the crease to be a little bit more orangey and diffused looking. So I'm building that product up in the crease, and it's not too glittery, so it actually looks like a matte or maybe even a satin eyeshadow, so it doesn't look bad in the crease. You just have to be careful with it. And then I'm going in with this sort of pinky salmony orange shade and I'm taking this Wet n Wild small concealer brush because it really packs on color and I'm building on that color on my entire lid. This color is the only color I used that I didn't really love. It took a lot of build up to get it to look the way I wanted it to. I felt like I had to keep going over it repeatedly. It took about four times going over it to get it really built up and I even had to go in with my finger later as you'll see to build it up even more and get it the desired intensity that I wanted so this shade locks pigmentation a little bit but if you work with it it still ends up being really pretty so I'm just putting that all over my eyelid and then I'm going in with this wet n wild crease brush again with no additional product and I'm just blending out any harsh lines that I may have created this makeup look is about blending that's the primary focus of it and this is what I was mentioning earlier this is me just going back in with that shade with my finger just to really build up the intensity and now I'm going in with this elf blending brush and I'm taking the darker glittery orange in the middle right there and I'm building this up on the outer V and I'm putting it directly into the crease lower than any of the other crease shades because I don't want it to get diffused too close to the eyebrow because it is a little bit more glittery than the other shade that I used and I don't want this makeup look to look tacky in any way so I'm keeping that color lower. And I really like that I added this color because it just makes it a deeper orange and gives it some more dimension. It's really pretty. And then back to my Too Faced palette, I'm using that mousse shade and that same e.l.f. brush. And I just really wanted to deepen up this look. I thought it was a little bit too bright orange. So I'm using that mousse color just to add a little bit of depth and definition and I'm making it just a little bit more brownie rather than just pure orange and I actually really like how this ended up looking. So I'm just blending that brown mousse shade all over my crease and now I'm going back into that lighter glittery orange and I'm smoothing out any harsh lines I may have created. Like I mentioned this isn't too glittery of a shade so you can get away with uh, using it in your crease. Just be careful. And now I'm just going over that eyelid color again because some of it got blended away. And now this is my favorite part. I'm using the pink sugar color from the Too Faced palette and I just popped this on the center of my lid. That lid color that we used was like a peachy salmony orange and this really brings out the pink tones that were in it. This pink sugar color does and it just gives it a lot of dimension and it makes it look really pretty and it makes your eyes pop a little bit more. And now I'm using this Wet n Wild, I believe it's called the Proline Felt Tip Eyeliner. I'll leave it down below but I think that's what it's called and I'm just creating a thin line. I'm not doing anything too crazy. I wanted to add a little bit of drama but I didn't want to do a wing or anything because I wanted to keep it somewhat simple. So I'm just doing a thin line on the top of my eyelids right here. And I like this Wet n Wild eyeliner. It was my first time using it. It is a little bit of a drier formula than I was expecting. I thought it would be more liquid, but it's really easy to control. And now I'm going in with this NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Milk because I want to widen my eyes and make them look brighter.
I'm just taking this small angled brush from Wet n Wild and I'm putting that peanut butter shade that we used originally as a transition color from the Too Faced palette and I just put that lightly on the lower lash line and now I'm going in with that blue that I pointed to it just gives a nice pop of color to the look and I really really like this blue so I'm building that up on my lower lash line And then I'm going to take the e.l.f. blending brush again and I'm taking that lighter glittery orange that we used in the crease and I'm using that to diffuse the blue product and the peanut butter product that we used earlier and just get rid of any harsh lines. And I blended it a little bit more than I wanted to. I just want that blue line to be a little bit more defined so I went back in and defined it up a little bit. And now I'm going in with my Holy Grail Mascara and I'm applying two coats of this. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Original in the shade Black is Black. I didn't feel like applying any false eyelashes to this look because I feel like it's already dramatic enough with the colors and I didn't want to take away from any of the eyeshadows that are on my eyes. And also I feel like this mascara makes your eyelashes look like false eyelashes anyway so it could have been an overkill. And I'm going back in with that Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk because the blue that I used on my lower lash line kind of tinted the color of that. And I'm going back to my Lorac Pro Contour Palette and I'm using that medium contour shade on the Wet n Wild Contour Brush. And I'm just contouring my cheeks and my forehead, my temples, my jawline, under my lip a little bit, and also I'm going to be contouring my nose with this color. The Lorac Pro Contour Palette is very pigmented, so be careful with it. This was only like my third or fourth time using it, so I forgot how pigmented it really is. But it blends out really, really effortlessly. Just be careful with it when you first apply it because it is very pigmented. And I don't feel like this medium contour shade is too dark for me. I feel like it's the perfect contour shade for me. And putting the contour under your lip like that just makes your lips look fuller, so that's why I did that. And I wanted my nose to look just a little bit smaller, so I'm contouring my nose slightly. I'm not doing anything too intense. And then I'm going in with this Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in Apricot in the middle. I absolutely love this blush. The new formulation for the blushes from Wet n Wild are incredible. They're one of my favorite blushes that I own now, and they're only about $2, so I highly recommend them. They're amazing. And this apricot color looks really good with the oranges and peaches that are on my eyelids, so it just really ties everything together in this makeup look. And now I'm using the e.l.f. Baked Highlighter and Moonlight Pearls, and I'm using that same e.l.f. blending brush just to highlight my brow bone. And also I'm using this brush to highlight on my face because it's fluffy enough that it gives a really nice highlight to your cheekbones and your nose. So I'm just highlighting on my cheekbones and also a little bit above my eyebrow. And I'm going to be highlighting down the center of my nose pretty heavily because I like intense highlights. And I'm also going to be highlighting above my cupid's bow because this also helps to make your lips look fuller. And then just in the center of my forehead where I highlighted with that concealer. And you can see that that blending brush worked really well with highlighting my face. And now I'm going in with this Wet n Wild, I think it's called the Mega Last Lipstick, and I'm going in with the shade Dollhouse Pink. And I'm just building that up. But I didn't want it to be a matte lipstick, so I'm going to go in later with the NYX Butter Gloss lip gloss in the shade Vanilla Cream Pie and this makes the lipstick a little bit less intense and vibrant pink. It kind of tones it down and makes it a more muted baby pink. I didn't want it to be as intense of a pink. And that's the completed makeup tutorial. I hope you enjoyed.
it's just really straightforward, nothing too difficult. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you recreate this look. And I have nothing else to say other than please subscribe. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!